Hey guys, this is Fidel Master Mitchell. Queen's Gambit is a very common and strong opening. In this video, I'm gonna show you five effective and creative opening traps to crush this line. If you're new to the channel, you're welcome to subscribe. I upload instructive chess videos every week about openings, masters games, tactics, and more. Without further delay, let's get into the five best opening traps to destroy Queen's Gambit. So the first opening trap happens after the moves d4, d5, c4, queen's gambit, and then we're going to play queen's gambit declined, so e6. Here a very normal move is knight c3, and we're gonna play knight f6, and a very common move is bishop g5, just pinning our knight, and by the way with some pressure here because the knight is a good defender of the center. In this position we're gonna set the trap and we're going to play the move knight b d7. The name of this trap is elephant trap and the idea is that intentionally we are unprotecting the pawn on d5. Observe they can trade and capture with the knight because the dr knight is pinned here on f6. So they can trade and then they can capture the pawn if they want. But actually this is a blunder. This is a, a very bad move. In this position black is actually winning um, there is a tactics, we could say this is like ignoring the pin. We're not supposed to be able to move the knight because there is a pin. However, we are going to move it. The move to win in this position is going to be the surprising knight takes knight. The idea is that even when white can capture our queen, we'll be able to get the queen back. Observe the king is very exposed over here, over this diagonal. So we have this move here, bishop b4 check. And they don't have any other move. I mean, the only move is uh, queen d2. So then we can capture the queen. After this capture, we take the bishop on d8 and observe we have a piece up. They have, I think, like a one pawn for the piece. So it's a decisive advantage for black. In the next opening trap, after d4, immediately we are going to play the move e5. And, well, something interesting about this one is that it is going to work if your opponent is planning to play a queen's gambit, but also if your opponent is trying or planning to play something different, like a, a London system or a call attack or any other variation, not necessarily a queen's gambit. Um, it's already working. I mean, we can already try it because it happens in move number one. So the idea here is that after d takes e5, there is this move and it is this bishop c5. The most common move for white here is just a normal development move like knight f3. And here we continue with this gambit idea and we play d6. And well, again, the most normal move is just to accept that pawn e takes d6 and then uh, we are going to play this move knight e7 and of course this is going to be blundering the knight intentionally we're gonna understand everything right now but before we continue talking about this opening trap we need to give full credit for this one to GM Derek and International Master Rosen they have been popularizing uh, this idea in online chess so the idea here is that after knight e7, uh, if the pawn takes the knight, the queen is going to be attacking the queen. But we have a way to deflect the enemy king. So we have this move. Bishop takes f2, and once the king captures, then we can take the queen on d1. This is getting even more interesting and even more powerful when we use this idea of... When we play the move knight e7, uh, we should actually pre-move it. So, once we play d6, I mean, especially for blitz and bullet games, uh, we are going to pre-move knight e7, is the idea. So, once you uh, give the knight here on e7, your opponent will think it's just a blunder because of a pre-move. Because, of course, this is very, very suspicious if we play knight e7 here just giving the knight just like that and probably they can see the trick with bishop takes f2 however if we do this like a pre-move once we play d6 we pre-move knight e7 
it's going to be very different. Also observe that the Premove Knight E7 is working very well against other strong ideas. For example, if white plays bishop g5, the premove knight e7 is working pretty well, so we don't lose the queen. The third opening trap I want to show you is this one we call England Gambit. The idea here is that we play e5, it's the same first move, but after d takes e5, we play something uh, more common like knight c6, attacking the pawn, trying to get it back. Usually in this position, white is going to try to protect that pawn with a normal move like knight f3, and then we have this move queen e7 is trying to get the pawn again, now we're attacking twice, so they should defend and probably this move bishop f4 is one of the most common moves in this position. Here we are going to play the move queen before check and observe we're getting the bishop and also getting the pawn and the king is in check. White should try here bishop d2, observe if they play something different like queen d2 they could be in trouble because here we are taking the pawn on b2, getting the rook and after queen c3 it's probably the only way to defend the rook but it's not really working because we have uh, bishop b4 spinning the queen and getting a huge material advantage so after queen b4 we're assuming white plays bishop d2 and we're going to capture the pawn on b2 here we're attacking the rook so the right move for white in this position is going to be knight c3 which is more or less logical but actually even more logical and tempting is bishop c3 because they are defending the rook but also they are getting a tempo by attacking our queen so probably they will try bishop c3 and then they are getting into our trap in this position it is black to move and black is winning bishop c3 is just a blunder in this position and the way to win here is by using these tactics we call pen the bishop is an important piece right now, it's defending, it's attacking, so we're going to pin the bishop, and the move is bishop b4. Once we play this, we are getting the bishop, also the rook could be hanging, as the bishop is not really protecting. They can try, for example, queen d2, observe if they take the bishop, well, we can take the rook, but actually the best move is knight takes bishop, and we are still getting the rook, but also we are forking here on c2, so this is even better and the advantage is huge here for black so after bishop b4 they can try queen d2 on pinning the bishop again attacking the queen but well here we can just trade bishop takes c3 and white has to move if they take with the knight well the rook is hanging so we are winning if they take with the queen well this is even worse because here we have checkmate in one move queen c1 Opening trap number 4, after d4 we play d5, and after c4 we are going to play this line Albin counter gambit e5. And here the best move, and the most common move for white is just accepting this pawn, it's just hanging there. So d takes e5, and then we continue with d4. Good moves for white in this position are knight f3, developing, attacking, or a3, controlling very well this square b4 because there can be some problems with the bishop when it goes to b4 however, probably the most tempting move in this position is going to be e3 the idea is that they want to trade that pawn which is giving black a lot of space and also they want to develop the bishop, they want to trade queens over here so e3 makes a lot of sense here but it's not as strong as it seems in this position we can play bishop b4 check and the most normal move is bishop d2 and here we have this option d takes e3 at this point the position is still playable for white they should try f takes e3 and then we can try queen h4 check when they block we can play queen e4 attacking over the diagonal also as there is a pin here on d2 we are getting that pawn on e3 it's unprotected so we have some ideas in this position, there are some weaknesses on white's structure, so we are just trying to target those weaknesses. However, if after d takes e3, instead of recapturing with f, they take the hanging bishop on b4, then the advantage is going to be decisive for black. The way to win here is very interesting. In this position, we are going to capture the pawn on f2, we are trying to deflect the king but well uh, white doesn't 
really need to capture that pawn, they can just play king e2. In this position, we can try bishop g4, but it's not really going to work, because the knight is blocking on f3, and we're not getting anything. Also, we can, for example, like trade queens and capture that knight over there, and probably the material is going to be more or less equal, so it's going to be more or less playable, but we don't have a, any clear advantage. So the right line is going to be a, a different move. The tactics we're going to use here is under promotion, and the idea is that we're not going to promote to queen, we're going to promote here to a knight, just to continue with the initiative and remove an important defender. So the right move here is going to be f takes u1, promoting to knight, and the idea is that if the rook takes, we can play bishop g4 here, and now there is no knight f3, so we are getting the queen. But also, uh, for example, if white doesn't take the knight, they say, okay, I don't have to take here because I'm going to lose the queen with the skewer, so I'm just going to play here king e1. Well, here we continue with the initiative, we can play queen h4 check, and well, g3 we have queen e4, so probably the best move is going to be king d2, and then we can just develop, get a tempo by attacking the bishop, for example, if the bishop goes back, we can play bishop g4, developing, but also our rook is better. In the next move, we are castling queenside, and then many problems for white here. Observe, we also have like three knights, so we have an extra minor piece in this position. So the advantage is decisive for black here. And then we have this opening trap. After d4, we play d5, and after queen's gambit, c4, we're going to try e6. Once white plays knight c3, we are going to play semi-slav, and it is this move uh, c6. I must admit it's going to be harder to make your opponent get into this opening trap, but still it can happen, and it's such a spectacular tactic, the one uh, we are going to have here, that I thought it was worth to include it on the list, not only for the order of the moves we are going to see here, but also for the idea, it's something we can try in our positions maybe, and I think it's, it's very creative. So. The idea here is that a common replay for white is e4, they have the knight controlling that square so they can play it, fighting for the center, and here we are going to play bishop b4. We are still attacking the pawn on e4 so they can try bishop d3, and then we break on e5, this pawn is hanging so they can just take it, d takes e5, and then we take the other pawn on e4, the idea is that we want to trade queens and we want to destroy the structure on c3, so after bishop takes e4, Queen takes queen, king takes queen, and then bishop takes knight. After pawn takes bishop, we are going to develop the knight over a6. A normal move here is rook b1, is controlling a half open file, not letting our bishop be developed. But also remember, it doesn't have to be exactly in this turn, exactly in this move. This is more like a spectacular tactic that can actually work in any order, the idea is that uh, it's really hard to find for your opponent. So, rook b1, here we can play bishop a6, and we are ignoring that pawn on b7. Of course, white can take it, and they can think, well, I'm totally fine here after knight c5 with a fork. The bishop can take that pawn with check, and that position looks really good. So, probably they won't see a reason not to take that pawn on b7, but actually, it's a blunder in this position. Black has decisive advantage, but we need to find the right move. The tactic here, as I was saying, is really special, and we could say it's like a double attack, but something we don't see every day. The way to win here is by playing this surprising move, castling queenside, and the idea here is that now the king is in check, and at the same time we are attacking the rook on b7 there's nothing they can do to save the rook. Once they move the king, then we capture the rook. And of course, we have decisive advantage here. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you want to learn the five best opening traps to crush the strong and popular Sicilian defense, check out this interesting video. I'm sure you will enjoy it, and it will help you a lot. Thank you so much, guys. Like, subscribe. See you on the next.